Russia is not the enemy. Russia is not the enemy. So I don't think Boris Johnson should be in his wits calling people traitors who never pledged an allegiance to the British establishment, which is what the establishment is. Anybody who speaks about the establishment and doesn't refer back to Britain and thinks it's an American thing has a cock in their eyeball. It's British. The establishment is not something any of us Westerners ever pledged allegiance to. I'm an Australian. I pledge allegiance to Canberra. Even that has its limits because Canberra doesn't exactly represent the interests of Australia all the time, though the current government's pretty good. I'm not The only thing I don't like is the fact that they're paying so much for useless fucking submarines when we could be giving that money to Western Australia and spending it on much better things. But anyway, you've heard what I've had to say about that. No, I don't owe any allegiance to the establishment. I don't owe any uh, political opinion to the establishment so as to hate Russia. Now, do I dislike what Russia have done in Ukraine? Yes, it's highly undemocratic. Do I stick up for the Ukrainians? Yes. I would say this straight to Putin's face. He could threaten me with death. He could... Although, he's not as bad as they make him out to look. And Russia is not as big and scary as they make it out to look. He could, but, but I'm just saying, I would confront him. I'm not <laughs> like anyone else. I would stare him at the face and say, mate, what you're doing in Ukraine is absolutely fucking wrong. You, these people don't want to be Russian in terms of they want to be European aligned. You can't force people to be aligned with you. You can't force people to be your friend. They want to be European. They can be European. At the same time, if Crimeans want to remain Russian, we have no right to fucking flip the rules around and then say, oh, yeah, these are new rules. No, uh, Crimea is ours too. No. Get the fuck out of my face. In the grand scheme of things, what I'm saying is Russians aren't the troublemakers. They never have been. Russians, say it again. Russians have never been the troublemakers and the problem. Okay? Uh, The West has. And when I say West, I don't mean Paris. I don't mean uh, Madrid. I don't mean Rome. I don't mean uh, Budapest, because that is still technically the West. I don't mean Brussels. Uh, I don't mean... uh, Not Köln. Köln is not the fucking capital of fucking Germany, you dickhead. Uh, Not Brandenburg. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I should know this off my heart. Uh, you get my point. Fuck, I even know the capital of Switzerland, Zurich. Zurich. It's it, it, it's not Valletta, it's not Zurich. Uh, and, uh, I tell you what, when I say the West is responsible, we're talking about the Blair era. We're talking about London and Washington only, not even Canberra. It's Washington and London who uh, brand Russia this way. They're not a threat. They never have been. They're a very constructive member to world peace. They're a very constructive culture. They're a very constructive civilization. I mean, they've been lurking around doing weird shit for two or three hundred years, but what European power hasn't? So get the fuck out of my face. They're not a problem. So Boris Johnson is not in his right to call us, to call Carlson, uh, to call a person interviewing Putin a traitor. We don't subscribe to the establishment. We are not your friend. We are not allied to you. We have no allegiance to you. You have nothing to do with our countries. What the fuck right do you sons of bitches have to dare open your mouth and use the most vile word, something comparable to Judas, a traitor. Uh, traitor is the most offensive word you can say to me because I've, for instance, never claimed to be allied to white Australians. My ally is Australia, the kangaroos, the emus, my Australian way of life, my Australian flag, the Australian people. It's apolitical. It's got nothing to do with who runs in the government at any time. It's got nothing to do with an establishment. It's got nothing to do with fucking white cunts. If I'm in Malta and I'm fighting a war for them, which I would do, if I'm cherishing my beautiful heritage, which I absolutely love, but Australia's in trouble, guess what? I have to come back here because this is my country and Australia comes first. Don't ever call me a traitor. I will put you on your fucking knees and make you deep throat me. You will never call me a traitor. So for this fucking clown to start calling people like... 
Carlson a traitor is exactly to call me a traitor because he has every right to internationally probe opinions, kick up dust. What's going on here? What's going on there? He is not tied to an establishment leash. Who the fuck do people think they are in London? These fucking sick cunts. Okay, this is 2024, not uh, the 1700s with the little empire propping up. That was the most menacing fucking thing anybody's ever heard of. We never pledged allegiance to Britain. We never pledged allegiance to London. Okay? Uh, I'm sure they'd appeal to anything. But your grandparents, all of them, they were all part of the King's Maltese Regiment. They were allied. They swore allegiance to the fucking King. King's Regiment. They were. They were the finest soldiers of the King's Regiment. They were the ones behind the guns. They were the ones who won the, ink, the British the fucking war. Fucking, fucking sons of bitches, giving all their fucking, look, they deserved it, some of them, giving all their fucking heroes war medals, or oh, they've all got English surnames, they parade them on these film reels, and all they were doing was fucking in planes, yeah, in ships, yeah, well away from where it was all happening. But the Maltese on the ground, holy fucking mother of, holy mother of Christ, the big X drawn on the ground, bang, bang, and who had to shoot from that big X? Our ancestors! Oh, it's the ones with the balls bigger than my fucking bum cheeks. Yep, yeah, no, fuck. There's 300 planes coming at us. Bang, 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 bang. Do you think they got fucking paraded as heroes in Britain? Nah. King's Own Regiment, Malta. Get the fuck out of my face. That was the Maltese militia who were fighting for their country. So don't fucking act as if we, because an ancestor was ever, uh, was part of the regiment and got taken to World War One. Taken to World War Two, fought in the Boer Wars, fought in this war, fought in that war. That doesn't make fucking their lineage uh, the property of London or some sort of. Uh, it doesn't make them ally to London or anything like that. Get the fuck out of my face! If you look at the badge properly, each one had a Maltese cross on it. You fucking tits! And the Maltese love the English, mind you. So that's another reason they banded uh, together. They'll, they'll always the English and the Maltese will always have a deep affinity. So don't ever conflate the, the British thing going on with the English thing. The, the Maltese always love the English. Uh, the English can't fucking stand the British, and they know exactly what that means more than the Maltese. Look at look at them getting pumped right now. Their their economy is their way of life is being pumped by this establishment. They hate the establishment more than the Maltese, which is what the British is. And then this goes all the way back to Carlson doing the interviews. What do, do London think they have a fucking claim on him or something because of history or the way they think he... Well, not even history, the way they think history went down. Oh, you fucking pieces of shit. The Russians are not the problem. The Russians, say it again, it's repeat it, they're not the problem. They've had a nuclear arsenal enough to cause the world a big headache for generations. As do France secretly. Well, not secretly. They, everyone knows they've got nukes, but they don't know how powerful they are. <laughs> Fuck me dead. You don't want the French Navy at your door on a bad day. At all. So look, the point is, that's not the reason Russia don't uh, misbehave. Because France can keep everybody in line. France can keep the USA in line if it wants to. <laughs> I fucking love France. Oh, the French. God, I love them every time. Uh, the Russians, though, they've had this massive nuclear arsenal. And regardless of the French or the British or the US, they can do damage. They can, they can, they can be coercive, but they're not. They have not been a problem. The West has been coercive. And when I say the West, again, it's only been, it's only been London and Washington trying to be coercive. Not Rome, not Madrid, not all the European, not all the proper Western capitals. Historical, the historical West of Europe, the true West, Madrid, Paris, Rome, and everywhere in Germany, pretty much. Not, not these historical centers, even Lisbon. <laughs> these historical centers of Europe are... Uh, Not the problem. Washington and uh, London are, and they're getting on everyone's nerves. Especially when you start saying that there's some sort of allegiance we owe you, or 
and you start using the capital T word, trader, when really London has been the biggest trader in Western history. Going around in circles like a prostitute. I'll fuck him, I'll fuck them, I'll fuck him, I'll fuck them. I'll set Europe on fire. I'll try to set Europe on fire again like they are today, but pretend it's the other way around and like we're doing some ally thing. But Europeans aren't fucking dumb. That is just fucking wrong. No, 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 no. There's no allegiance with Britain. There's no allegiance with London. The concept of Britain is gone. There's no ally. There's no allegiance there. There's no alliance with Britain. Yeah. There's no empire. There's no king. Okay, we have a ceremonial dickhead, but he's completely useless. He's completely impotent as a king. It's it's ceremonial in Australia, meaning we can laugh at him, we can throw fucking cucumbers at him. He's just there. He's just, woohoo, look at him. That's uh, Australia is fully independent. Yes, we have a monarch, technically, but he's ceremonial. He, he is completely uh, redundant. It's only... a political function when people need to be sworn in that's it uh, there is no actual impetus except i guess for some prestige which they think exists but there is no actual real function of the monarchy in australia again i'll say it, there is no real function of the monarchy we don't have to, we don't have to ally ourselves with the concept of a monarch we don't have to like him there's no obligation for australians to do anything and I, I don't know if it's the same in uh, Britain. I think it's a little bit different. Our setup is unique. Uh, he is uniquely the Australian king, whereas it's a bit different overseas. Well, uniquely the Australian monarch. And uh, and that goes back to the 80s, I think, the Australia Act, 86, 87, because uh, a lot of Europeans didn't like the idea of the lack of independence that we had. It was, yeah, now we... We're investing here. We're planning on staying here for the long term. We love our country. We love Australia. But this dickhead has to go. That was how it was back in the 80s. Not many people remember that because they weren't alive then. Uh, nor was I. But this is what it was for people like my grandfather and other persons. It was, you know, we're Aussies now. But, you know, what's this fucking British dickhead doing hovering over Australia or us being not in fully independent to UK Parliament? You know, who the fuck are these cunts? This is Australia. Fuck off. And then it happened. Ave Cruch Albanese. Now I've got him. <laughs> I love him. Uh, Republic next. But anyway, that's another story for another day. Uh, yeah, Russia is not a problem. As a matter of fact, we should even do business with them. The fo Russia is the, one of the greatest economies happening up up and coming economies it's been significantly stifled because of what's happened in the last three years but it's it'll always remain one of the most emerging markets when that is no longer a factor and for us to sort of drift away from being chained to london uh, caged by these fucking british freaks to just yeah no this orcas thing's a fucking joke we were always allies get the fuck out of my face uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do with Russia. There's an emerging market there. They're, they're, the Russians are honestly the most straightforward business persons on the planet. The Maltese deal with the Russians all the time. Uh, a lot of my uncles deal with the Russians all the time because they're some of the you know, most well, they're, well, some of the most wealthiest business people in Malta. So they do a lot of business with the Russians. They're as straight shooter as you can be. They don't shoot crooked. They don't. They don't fuck around. They do not fuck around. And that's why, admittedly, the Malta, even with besides the Ukraine conflict, mind you, Malta's help, rightfully helping Ukraine, the Maltese and the Russians have a relationship like no other. They, they see eye to eye, the Russians and the Maltese. They, they, they shoot straight at each other. They don't throw curveballs at each other or do anything behind each other's back. And it's been like that since 1700s, since, since the early 1700s, since the Russians... Uh, were tutored on how to uh, operate a navy by the Knights of St. John. And that they never turned back. That's how their modern navy was formed, being tutored by the Knights of St. John, the Maltese, uh, which I'll never forget. And uh, in other words, the modern way of warfare, the, Russian, the way the Russians play modern way of warfare, 
is significantly Maltese influenced, almost entirely Maltese influenced to some extent, to, to some regards. But there's a relationship there, and they're straight shooters. And the Maltese and the Russians, they cooperate like no other. And this is the businessmen, not necessarily the, uh, the governments. The governments and the private sector, even in Russia, are slightly different. Uh, and they, there's a, they just they do business so easily. They can't do business like that with the British, in terms of there are British people in Malta, and a lot of them operate businesses, but they're a bit they're more English persons, uh, as opposed to doing business with persons on Britain. Just look at the Stewards Vitals case. That's an Anglo-run business. That's as crooked as fuck. Curveballs left, right, and centre. You can't do honest business with these cunts from Washington or London. It doesn't happen. Malta have been doing business with Russia for fucking 300 years. And it, does, it, it just gets better and better. So we should be able to freely do business with the Russians and China and other places that we see fit for a sustainable future, most importantly. And we shouldn't be intimidated by Boris telling us that we have some sort of obligation to his most menopausal London and fledgling fucking empire. We've got no allegiance to it. That Now you've just crossed the fucking red line. There is no allegiance. There has never been an allegiance to London or the British or any concept of rule there. It's a red line. It's a, it's a red line that's been crossed and it's going to resonate to a lot of other Europeans because they will realise that the British still have this idea that other people owe them allegiance. What, what is this? What's, what is this fucking cobweb telling us? This fucking human cobweb telling us that we can fuck it. We can do this, we can't do that. Nah, no, get the fuck out of my face. The Maltese, for instance, want to do business more than anything with the Arabs. The Maltese have a soft spot for the Arabs. Uh, the Arabs came to Malta 800, 900 and they were, they just kept on flocking. Uh, and contrary to popular belief, the Arabs were never fully kicked out of Malta. The Maltese were never fully kicked out of Malta. The Normans wrote an account of such, but it was a completely hodgepodge account, unreliable account, and one based on wishful thinking. Uh, for instance, Gar Hassan is a cave in Malta. I'm not saying it comes from that era. I'm just saying Gar Hassan is a cave in Malta where a one of the many caves in Malta where a uh, Arab person took refuge uh, when he had a shipwreck he lived in that cave so they named it after him the point is that during the Norman, the Norman conquest or the Norman uh, fixer up thing they didn't they didn't really do anything Malta was full of tunnels they didn't know where any of them were all the all the Maltese and the Arabs had to do was okay. There's the tunnels, do, 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 and stay there. And then after a few years or whatever, emerge. They just keep on doing that, and eventually they left. And then the Spanish came, and the Spanish found them there. There's a, a completely bullshit account. Hence why the language survived. Duh. If they the fuck they're dumb the Normans. If they kicked out every person from Malta as they claim. How the fuck did the language survive? You stupid cunts. Oh, historians. That's British history. That's British history. That's Norman history according to the British. They wiped the, they wiped the island clean, but this Arab language, that is the Maltese language, and an ancient Aramaic, Aramaic language, which is the original Maltese language, uh, fused with Arabs who came there and could communicate with that language, uh, that's that's um, that's the official language of Malta today. Uh, knock 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 knock. The Maltese language is a fully Semitic language in Latin. Knock knock. Uh, so the Maltese, in other words, want to do business with the their ancient Arab cousins. Even you could, to some extent, say brethren, because we are uh, the Maltese race is to some extent. A, a, a small percentage of like 20 or 30 percent of the Maltese are significantly Arab. 
20 to about 20 to 30 percent of the Maltese race are significantly Arab. I mean, look at me. I'm mostly Latin genetics, and there's definitely a little Arab in uh, my nunna, definitely, and maybe a little bit in my nunnu. And if I put this on, I could easily pass as an Arab. You know, the ones with the moustache and dark eyes and complexion, easily, easily, in two seconds. I look more Arab than the people in the, in the Emirates. They look less Arab than me. The Maltese, 10 to 20% of them are fully Arab. Almost fully Arab. And the Maltese want to do business with their Arab brethren. The Maltese want to communicate with their Arab brethren. But when Mossad, when London, create monsters like ISIS and do that on behalf of extremist Muslims and collaborate in that way, secretly, well, that gets in the way of the great communication, the great business, the great future that the Maltese can forge with their Arab brethren or in North Africa, in the Middle East. Because we don't want to have religious barriers. Do you get my point? This, this extremism, this, you know, crusade mentality from the Muslims as much as the Christians, it's, it's got to go. Absolutely got to go. Okay, we believe in Christ, our God. You believe in Allah and that Muhammad was his messenger and that's where it ends. If any of us want to convert, if any of us want to take interest, so be it. Other than that, get the fuck out of my face to another era. Let's look at what we are. We're fucking Arab. We're, we're Arab cousins. Are you fucking serious? We should be doing the dub care. We should be laughing. We should be fucking celebrating. And we don't need the British. We don't need some fucking monkey from London telling us who to be al allied with. Okay? We, no, no, no. We want, to, we want to speak to the Egyptians. We want to speak to the Sudanese. We want to speak to the uh, Saudi Arabians. These are our long-lost cousins. We've probably got a lot more in common than we'd ever imagine. We, because it, because it was the Prophet's family who went to Malta, the Aglabid Arabs who settled on Malta, we probably have similar similar lineages, in, noble lineages to the fucking, to the Arabs. We don't know. But w what we do know is that, because Muhammad had a lot of kids and cousins and all that sort of stuff, and it went on and on and on. But what we do know is that the people that, uh, invaded Malta were all from his lineage but we know nothing else we absolutely don't have lists we don't know nothing this is only something that the Arabs could work out for us in terms of who we are ancestrally so you know these are these are awesome common bonds you know the Maltese are, look let's be blunt the Maltese aren't gonna all of a sudden celebrate a Muslim uh, heritage they're not so let's not give people false ideas we're proud Christians but there's an intrinsic Arab link that we're very proud of, even as my part, of, even as being a Maltese Australian. That's why I get along with. Uh, uh, that's why during all my teenage years, ninety-five percent of my friends, ninety percent of my friends were all Arab, Afghan, Middle Eastern. There's just this perfect link that hits that note every time. I just they're my spirit animal. I just communicate with them and get along with them better than anyone else. I can't get along with anyone else. That we, we, we think and see on the same level. And uh, we don't need religious barriers created by London or Mossad to fuck that up. So the Muslims will one day thank me and understand the logic to why I did what I did. Although I will always state religious extremism cannot be tolerated and you have no right to want to kill people, to fuck people, to do this and that just because you're offended. No. For Christians and for Muslims, absolutely not. I don't want to ruin this video or my message. Uh, the point is, going to that extent, we don't need a, a Boris Johnson getting in the fucking way and saying who needs to be allied to who, what you need to do, what this media needs to do. No, 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 no. We're going to. Robert Abella is going to go to Saudi Arabia and do the dub care with the king of Saudi Arabia. That's what he's going to do because I know that. Uh, We've got Arab in our blood, even on the Abilah line. That's what Robert's going to do. Robert's going to go to Saudi Arabia, obviously not Mecca because that would be disrespectful, but probably Medina, that would be acceptable. He's going to go to Medina and they're going to do the dubkin, Robert Abilah and the king of Arabia, and they're going to do it proudly. And yeah, that's, 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 that's the allegiance. <laughs>